Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support... Visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. 
But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on water. Washer and dryer coverage. Just call 1 800 616 8010. That's 1 800 616 8010. Again, 1 800 616 8010. Call now. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a non-profit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again, or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. It is I, your lovable host, El Rod, coming to you live from my Bunker Eyes home studio, somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state... Big government or bust, it is... November the 24th. Number that you can call this evening is 603. We'll get right to it, shall we? Or just bear with us as we try to whole issue with um, uh, the microphone situated and taken care of. Hopefully we will, uh, won't have any issues this evening. Uh, if we do, then well, obviously we'll just have to try to fix it. On the fly. But a uh, new microphone is coming. Um, I still have yet to decide between one of two different models. And, um, and, and there's something else that we're working on, too. So I'm kind of hoping, and, and, but uh, uh, that it won't be necessary because hopefully I'll be able to get, uh, to get something here in the, in the uh, Bunker Eyes home studio or that's a l- even better than what I'm looking at. So we're working on it. So just hang in there. But we do have the gobble gobble Thanksgiving holiday coming up in a couple of days. I know we we're we're getting knee deep in uh, into the holiday se- holiday season. Now I said it began uh, back in um, October uh, because well in, in in days gone by. We, we couldn't say that. It, the holidays actually began, because Thanksgiving was, 
the first uh, of the season, it was the, the first big holiday. But now Thanksgiving is kind of uh, the also ran holiday. It's not the it's not the huge holiday that it once was because it's been usurped by none other than Halloween. Halloween. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, isn't that, um, that's from, um, that, what, a nightmare before, a nightmare before Christmas. Who would have thunk that you could, you, you could take a holiday that is all about death and evil and destruction and combine it with a holiday that's all about light and life and hope and wonderment. Tim Burton, I, you know, I got to tell you, is I've seen A Nightmare Before Christmas. I did kind of like it, but at the same time, I shudder to think that somebody could create that. I really do. Uh, for, that, for that particular reason, because it's this dichotomy that brings these two opposite, polar opposites together, where this one dark character was it a, a jack skeleton or skella skella something whatever whatever jack's name is um he wants to be santa now what is santa i mean jack represents the opposite of life does he not and what does santa represent santa represents life itself you know everlasting life because santa is immortal i know i know we've had the tim allen uh, the Santa Claus movies uh, uh, that, that show us that, that Santa is not exactly immortal. Um, that he that you know obviously Tim Allen isn't the first Santa. But um, be that as it may, uh, we, but we also used to have uh, the the wonderful uh, was it Gu- uh, Guthy Rankin Guthy Rank Guthy Rank. Um, Rankin and Bass, that's it. Rankin and Bass. Uh, the uh, uh, the stop motion animation programs. It, 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 you would think that they've been around for decades and decades. Well, they've been around for about 30 or 40 years. That is true. So I guess that's, you know, three or four decades. But they were created not in the 40s or 50s or the 30s, but in the late 60s. Mid to late sixties is when we got a lot of those programs. Same with Charlie, the Charlie Brown specials. A lot of those were created in the late sixties and uh, early seventies. Um, so they they they're they're relatively new holiday traditions, but they are, you know, pretty much the classic American holiday tradition. And and one of the things that that we found in the uh, the Rankin Bass or Bass Rank Rankin and Bass, I think not Bass and Rankin, uh, maybe it was that way. Uh, one of the things that we that, that we notice about them is they always brought what what in one of the uh, the one um, Mrs. Cla- what Mrs. Claus was introduced Santa Claus Santa, was it Santa Claus is coming to town um, you know, Chris Kringle redhead that type of thing when he was younger uh, if, uh, they showed Santa and Mrs. Claus you know paying um, praying to and and paying homage to the reason for the season, Jesus Christ, uh, which you don't get that kind of stuff on regular TV anymore. I mean, you got you got to kind of have to go to to specific types of of cable networks to get that kind of thing. But yeah, Jesus is the reason for the season, and I know there are a bunch of people out there that are talking about well. There's like five thousand different cultures with five thousand different holidays around this time. I get it. I understand it. I also understand that the basically the early Catholic Church specifically chose the 25th of December to take over the pagan ritual or holiday of 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 winter solstice. Because nobody knows the exact day that Jesus Christ was born, but we do know you know, with obviously a fair amount of accuracy that it wasn't in December. It was, you know, it was a, it was a cold night. Uh, and in the Middle East, at that particular time, 
it was most likely sometime, you know, without the snow, however, but it was pretty much a similar climb as the northern half of of New Eng- uh, of um, the United States. So around late August through September, possibly even early October, uh, would have been that time frame for, for Christ. And we also know that when the census was taken or the tax collection was, was taken, because you had to go to your town, your city of, of birth in order to be counted and taxed. For the, well, that happened around uh, late August, early September that that was happening. So we, we put the weather together along with, along with the, the actual historical data of the Roman Empire of the time, which Christ was born under, under Roman rule. Um, we can tell that it was sometime in August or September that Jesus Christ was born, not December. So we got that. But the point is, is that the vast majority of the Western world today understands that December 25th has nothing to do with anything else but Jesus Christ. The birth of Christ, period. That's, that's the day that we, even though that isn't the day that he was born on, it is the day that for good or bad, that the church at the time chose to celebrate his birthday, his birth. And that's fine with me. I, I, hell, we can move it if we want. I don't, if we want to move it to September 1st, I'd be, I'd be okay with that. I really would. But understand this, all you people out there, because it isn't really about, about the, the giving the gifts or the Christmas tree, all, the, all, those, all that kind of stuff, although that is wonderful. You know, those traditions are wonderful. They're, they're homey. They're cozy. They're beautiful. They put you in the mood. Um, and all that kind of wonderful, positive type of stuff that goes along with it. Yeah, I get it. But I can do without it. I could do without it because really what this is all about is celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior here on this planet. God becomes human form just for us. That's important. So all those other holidays that are around this time, they're irrelevant. That's not the reason. They they are not the reason for the season. If you want to celebrate, you know, Hashma, Dina, whatever, 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 Go right ahead, but do not say that, do not try to eclipse a Christian, a Western Christian um, uh, holiday or tradition, and then try to claim it as your own. That's not going to fly with me. That doesn't work. That's not normal or natural. And I don't understand, you know, we don't have anybody else out there or any other holiday, you know, no, no, well, maybe Jewish holidays, but no other holidays, especially uh, nobody's trying to eclipse Muslim holidays, for instance, Islamic holidays, for instance. Oh, no, now we're supposed to actually recognize them in, in some school districts. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But Christmas has come to mean much more, unfortunately, than, than celebrating the birth of Christ. It's very commercialized, just like Halloween. Halloween was, you know, once, a, you know, this whole trick-or-treating nonsense wasn't always right. That's an early 20th century tradition that came about. But it, always, it wasn't always, you know, the way it is now. It was once a small, it wasn't even really considered a holiday. It was just a kid's event, just a reason for the kids to dress up and that type of thing. Because most adults, outside of the very grown-up masquerade balls, they didn't dress up. Adults didn't dress up. That was, you know, this is, it was a kid thing. And of course, you know, you know, back in the, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and 70s, you had the strange, you know, uh, of, uh, adults or families where the mom and dad were, would dress up just to hand out the candy. You know, the, the, they, they didn't do anything up. They were just at the, your know, mom dressed up as a witch or dad dressed up as a warlock or something and handed out the candy. That was it. Just to be a little bit more festive, quote unquote, for the season and for that particular holiday. But it was really all about the kids. The kids going door to door and basically uh, uh, issuing a threat. <laughs> trick or treat. Give me a treat or I'll give you a trick. Uh, that's pretty much what it was. Um, extortion. We're teaching kids extortion, <laughs> but um, in, in, in any event, it's 
it was not a big holiday. It was just something that the kids got to do in, in, at the last day of October. The holidays really didn't kick off until the week of Thanksgiving. That Thanksgiving was a huge holiday. You know, it, it, it used to be that it was it, the big holidays in this country, in this order, were Christmas, well, and then New Year, New Year's Day, simply because of, well, it's a new year. So you had Christmas, you had New Year, you had Easter, Thanksgiving, July 4th. It, basically in that order. Now, that's all upended. Now what you have is you have New Year's Day is, is very well celebrated, obviously, because you can't not celebrate it. It's you know the first day of the new year, basically. Everybody goes out and gets drunk. But when it comes to commercialism, uh, commercialism, and people actually taking time out and spending money on the holiday, this is the way it goes. And uh, I saw this, um, oh, I forget where I, where I saw it. I was kind of upset by it, but, uh, I, but it was a while ago. It was back in September because everybody was gearing up for Halloween. In August, people are gearing up for Halloween, you know, stores gearing up for Halloween. But it goes Christmas, with people spend their money on Christmas, Halloween. Oh, you'd think it would be New Year's in there. No. No. Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, July 4th, Easter, and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is last. Last. Isn't that something? How in about a generation and a half, Thanksgiving goes from basically number two. You know, second only to Christmas to being in last in the United States. That also sorts, starts to tell us about our culture and where our society is going. Is go, it, it's no accident that Thanksgiving is last on the holiday list, the major holiday list. But that there is now a tax on Christmas. And in a lot of places, you know, public squares, you can't call it Christmas. It's holiday or winter holiday. No, it's Christmas. It's season's greetings. No, it's Merry Christmas. It's happy holidays. No, it's Merry Christmas. It's Hanukkah, Rosh Hashanah. I don't care. It's still Christmas. There is no taking away from that. You just, there isn't in my book. And we as a society, we have to start understanding that, there, that when you start getting away from, from things that build character, that build and teach being united, that when you get away from those things, you start to have a society that declines. And when that society starts to decline, it starts to become in danger of being taken over by other entities. And we're seeing that right now in the United States. I hate to tell you, but it is. We are. It's true. We're seeing it right now. I hate to say it, but we are. So... I don't know why I even got off on that tangent. But anyway, happy Thanksgiving coming up. Please give thanks for what you have and who you have in your life. Be very th- cognizant and thankful of the people, the places, and the things that you have done, for over, done and been a part of and seen and been with over the last year. Really your entire life, but especially over the last year. It's important that you understand and give, be thankful and, and share and show your gratitude for what you currently have because it could all be gone tomorrow. When we have a nation that, that is actually bowing its head at, the, at our various tables and bowing at, on, on our knees and giving thanks and gratitude for what we have, you will start to see a nation that turns itself around because we will understand what it is that is so great and so good that we have. 
and you follow that straight in through if you want to be a Christian that celebrates Hanukkah, I wholeheartedly suggest that you do so. Learn about it, understand it. It is a major miracle holiday. It is not a holiday that has to do with anything else other than celebrating the miracle that God did. It is very appropriate for Christians to understand that and to celebrate God's miracle. And then jump right into Christmas and understand Jesus is the reason for the season. Be thankful and grateful and show gratitude for Christ for dying on the cross some, you know, 33 and a half years later. But still, he did that. But it would not have taken place if it were not for his birth. And that is the day, December 25th, that we choose to set aside to celebrate his birthday since we don't know when it is. There is no other holidays. There is no Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a BS, made up, ridiculous uh, Hanukkah wannabe holiday. I'm sorry. It is. I'm sorry. It is. It's, I know there are some people are going to say, Rally, but people say, no. It's a ridiculous notion. It's a stupid holiday that means absolutely nothing. They're trying to make it mean something, but it means nothing. If you want to celebrate it, go right ahead. But understand, it is a fake holiday. There is no rhyme, no reason. It's to celebrate the the harvest and and harvest in December. Really? No, they don't do any harvesting in December in Africa. And if you're talking about the United States, the harvest is, you know, was two months earlier. You don't give me this crap about harvesting. That's not what it's all about. But then go ahead and celebrate the new year. You know, be careful out there. But understand that you need to be giving thanks and have gratitude for seeing another year come. Because there are a lot of people that didn't make it. Young and old, they didn't make the, they're not going to make it to see 2016. This is what holidays really do. They're supposed to make you not only is it it's supposed to be for celebration. You know, surrounding whatever that holiday is about, but it's also about thankfulness and gratitude. July 4th, Independence Day. What We're celebrating the birth of, a, of our free nation and showing gratitude for being able to live in a country that is free, that was fought for by our founders, who gave us this wonderful constitution and this ability to be able to get off on a day or have an extended weekend in a, on a summer month. I know it's not all about barbecues and backyards and, and parades and stuff, but that is how we show gratitude and, and, and celebrate. You got to understand, you got to have gratitude for the country that you live in or else you're going to lose it. And right now we have a bunch of people, especially kids on college campuses or college camp I, uh, running around the, in this country that have absolutely no idea what their national history is, and they have no gratitude whatsoever for how this country came about and that they cur- currently live, still live in one of the freest countries that ever uh, uh, existed on this, the face of this planet. They just don't get it. They don't understand it. They haven't been taught it. So they have no history. They have no gratitude. And that's why we're seeing the types of things that we're seeing on campuses all over the country right now. It's ridiculous. It's anti-gratitude, if you you ask me. These same kids would probably protest if you wanted to have an Independence Day parade running down the quad of any campus saying you're interfering with their safe space. They would probably feel, um, I don't know. Uh, threatened and uncomfortable and feel like they wanted to puke or throw up or something if they saw or had to participate in an Independence Day parade. Uh, uh, Really? It's absolutely unbelievable. So all of these holidays are meant not only to celebrate what the holiday is about, but to show gratitude for those who came before who allowed the holiday to happen. Without it, the holiday is meaning, meaningless. Right now, everybody thinks that Thanksgiving is just about, you know, overstuffing themselves with tons of food, either a turkey or a ham or a goose or whatever you like to eat, or a tofur- tofurkey if you're a uh, vegan, and watch nothing, nothing but endless games of football all day long. That's not Thanksgiving. 
just saying, this week when you sit down with your family or your friends or your guest, understand that you're able to do so because of a lot of sacrifices of people that came way before you. And you need to understand and show the full thankfulness and gratitude because without that, you would have none of it. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars a pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's Innovative Boot Camp Program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. Stuck in a boring, low-paid job? By 2017, there will be a shortage of 2 million cybersecurity jobs worldwide. If you have a technical background but don't have a computer certification, you are being drastically underpaid. In months, you could be qualified for a new job in information technology, making real money with real job security. A new career is just a few clicks away at thecodeoflearning.com.
Um, I'm sorry. I was just watching this. Uh, uh, I'll probably put it, uh, share it over on Facebook. I was just watching this video over on Facebook uh, about uh, what's his name, Kobe Person, uh, where he's walking around with money taped to his suit coat. And he's got a cardboard sign that says, take what you need. And I'm just watching all these people uh, that are in, in well, they're well dressed that don't look like they need it. And <laughs> they're, 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 they're taking it uh, from, but um, in any case, yeah, that, that is, it's quite, quite funny for that kind of thing. To be, you know, one of the, I know a lot of people are talking about what's going on in, um, the Middle East right now. What we have going on uh, in Turkey, in Syria, and what's really happening over... Putin is kind of livid. I, I, don't blame him. I, but one of the interest. I, I know one of the things that is coming out... Well, if you haven't heard, Turkey, uh, Turkey admits to shooting down a Russian fighter jet because they say in Turkey says the, uh, the fighter jet, uh, invaded or violated, uh, it's airspace. And that Turkey warned them time and time again, at least 10 times that they were violating Turkish airspace. And the, uh, the Russian didn't pay attention, obviously. So the Turk shot it down. And evidently, it was a uh, it was a, a two person bird, two man bird. Now the the details are kind of sketchy on on what what has happened to the the two people, the pilot and the you know navigator, bombardier, that type of thing, uh, spotter in, in that uh, that ejected from the cockpit of of the of the hit aircraft while it was still in the air. Uh, well, it is it is noted or or supposedly it has been confirmed that one of them uh, was killed on uh, while they were on their parachute on the way down. It's just speculation is who killed them. Was it Syrians or was it rebels? Uh, there is also uh, a report that rebels have shot down a Russian helicopter. You know, the fighter attack copter. Um, well, that it would it would. Give reason and understand why, why they, if it is the rebels, why they would do that. Because, you know, when, when Putin first arrived on the scene with his military down there, he bombed the you-know-what out of the rebels. He wasn't, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're not going to be very forgiving about that. But anyway, Putin is, uh, you know, but, but Putin is a rather aggressive world leader. And he's out there, well, the, the, there will be consequences for this. Mark my words, Turkey. You will pay, and you will pay dearly for ra- downing a Russian jet. Yet no more talk. You will pay. But uh, so I, everybody's speculating what Putin really means by that. But uh, look, look. It, it, it's it's obviously. <laughs> It obviously has some people, uh, some members of NATO, because Turkey is a part of NATO. It has some members of NATO shaking in their boots because now they're saying, "Well, Turkey, you should have just, uh, you should, you, you, you should have escorted them out of your airspace. You, you, you should, you should have shot them down, man. You should have just escorted them out." No, Turkey had it right. I, I hate to say it, but when you warn somebody. If what they if they followed what they're saying that that happened, if you warn somebody and they keep incur in you know uh, incur incursion uh, keeps up in an incursion on your territory and your well, you got to think about well, what are they doing? You know, is the safety of my country and my people now now at risk? Let me give you a warning shot. Let me take you down. And the point that's being made is, look, I get unless Putin is going to bomb inside of Turkey, I guarantee you they will not incur 
over Turkish space again. Unless they really, unless they really just want to go to war with Turkey, they're not going. He's not going to. They're they're going to be very careful as to not in in quote unquote invade Turkish space. He's just not it, well because he doesn't want to lose another jet for one, and you know more pilots. Nobody's P- Putin is not immune to what to what the public in Russia would say um, if he ke- if he keeps losing aircraft. And pilots, it's not a good thing to do, really. No, it's not really a good thing to do. You want to try to keep your your aircraft, because you know, those planes are expensive, by the way. They're very, very expensive. And you want to keep your pilots, because they're expensive to train, not to mention they have value. Their, their lives are valuable. And uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to lose, because you don't want to have to go to the family, the mother, and say, your, your, your son... Is now dead, madam. We're sorry. But it is what it is over there. Hey. Dallas Mayor. I know you're probably thinking, well, why don't you say more about it? Right? Because everybody's already talked it to death. Uh, I've, I've posted stuff on, on online, on my website, rodeckles.net, on the Facebook page, you know, on Twitter. I don't need to go over this anymore. It's, all right, it's been covered. We don't have any more information than we did, you know, a couple hours ago. So no need for me to go through it. Anyway, Dallas Mayor. There is this Dallas Mayor who's a total nut job. Total idiot. Wacko. Creepo. Um... I don't, I don't, so Dallas mayor who fears white people. Yeah, is a Dallas mayor who fe- fears white people. Now, the Dallas mayor is also white, by the way. And the Dallas mayor lives in, um, lives in a neighborhood that is 92% white. I kid you not. Uh, Dallas mayor who fears white people lives in neighborhood uh, where 92% of the people in the neighborhood are white. Dallas mayor Mike, this is from uh, the Daily Caller. Dallas mayor Mike Rawlings has said that he is more afraid of white men than Syrian refugees. Of course, that's the, so this whole thing is about Syrian, the Syrian refugees. Despite his fear of whites, however, of which he is one of those white men. Well, let me just hold off for a second. Maybe this guy's getting, maybe he knows something we don't. You know, he's a white male. And if a white male is afraid of other white males, there's got to be a reason for it. I don't know, is he afraid of the mafia or something? Despite his fears of whites, however, the mayor manages to get by living in a ritzy neighborhood that is more than 92% white and only 1% black. So he's, he's so not afraid of blacks, yet, you know, one, let me tell you what 1%, 1% is out of every 100 white people, every 100 people that live there, only one of them is black. That's 1%. The uh, former CEO of Pizza Hut, of, well, hey, he's a rich guy. You know, Pizza Hut. Was, I can't remember the last time I ate at a Pizza Hut. Got to tell you, I don't, I haven't eaten at a Pizza Hut in years. Uh, Rawlings lives in, a, in the prestigious Preston Hollow neighborhood, which D Magazine, letter D, D Magazine described as almost entirely Lily White, as part of a feature piece titled, Why Are the Best Neighborhoods in Dallas Still Segregated? Well, I wouldn't say they're, they're not segregated by race. They're segregated by uh, economics. And if you can't afford to live in that, buy a house or rent a house in that neighborhood, then you're not going to be able to get in. No segregation there at all. Now, the cushy neighborhood, which is home to former President George W. Bush, 
golfer Jordan Spieth. Who I do I don't know a gar, a golfer. Who's Jordan Spieth? Uh, and Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, among other celebrities, actually had a white people only residence requirement on the books as recently as 2000. Uh, something else I didn't know about. But, you know, hey, it, it doesn't really matter. Because this, this guy is not the, she's showing up as being as a hypocrite. I'm afraid of white people. And that's probably like him saying, I'm afraid of rich white people. And that's what he lives around. <clears throat> rich white people. And, and I'm not bringing this up to be... Um, as some sort of racial component other than to say that it's not the right who, who's bringing race into politics constantly. It's not us on the right. It's always, you, it's always you wonderful, caring people on the left that seem to have issues with race. Not those of us on the right. Sorry, well, that's, that's the truth. Sorry. Um, speaking of rich people, <clears throat> global warming double dipper. Again, a daily caller story. Uh, global warming double dipper enriches family with tax dollars. Now we're always told about like Bernie Sanders telling us, oh, these corporations getting government welfare. It's like getting, you know, government welfare checks. I'm sick and tired of these government welfare checks. A global warming crusader used a tax-exempt nonprofit to stuff his family's pockets at the expense of taxpayers. Of course, everything's at the expense of taxpayers. I'm a taxpayer. You're a taxpayer. Uh, Everything's at the expense of those of us who are paying taxes. Now, according to a complaint filed with the Internal Revenue Service by two watchdog groups earlier today, the Competitive Enterprise Institute and Cause of Action, uh, fi- I, I don't know what the hell that is. I know you're probably saying, what? what? Who's? I'll repeat it for you. Pay attention. The Competitive Enterprise Institute and cause of action. That's who they is. Plain and simple. Uh, They filed a complaint asking the IRS to revoke the exempt status of the Institute of Global Environment and Society. The Institute of Global Environment and Society. A global warming advocate that has received over six the million dollars in federal grants. Let me say that again. The Competitive Enterprise Institute and Cause of Action filed a complaint asking the IRS to, uh, uh, to revoke the exempt status of the institution uh, uh, of the Institute of Global Environment and Society, Inc., which happens to be a global warming advocate that has received over $60 million in federal grants. Our money, taxpayer money, going to fight these people who are just putting it in their pocket. And they're saying, oh, well, we got to do something about global warming. Why? Because all you're going to do is put it in your pocket, like Al Gore. You know what Al Gore did, right? Yeah, just like Al Gore. Now, the government said that the letter should be used, uh, used, uh, the government should use the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act that is used to prosecute members of organized crime. You know, uh, the the, the environmentalist wackos, all those green piecers type of thing, um, maybe not Greenpeace itself, but all those environmentalists, they need to be brought up on racketeering charges. 
Serious, it, but really, they do because that's what they—they're they, all colluding together to try to take away your rights to do certain things with your own property, your own health, your own life. Blah blah blah. Uh, no, no, no. You you need to have uh you need to have us help you pay for everything and be insightful, so you can be more well-rounded. I don't need to be more well-rounded. I'm well-rounded enough. I just need people to, to tell to tell us the truth. That's is the truth so hard to demand and well, so hard to ask for, so hard to why is it so hard to get? I don't know why the truth is so hard to get. But in any case, so this guy is making Tons of cash. Now, the incredibly, it's incredibly ironic that while Dr. Shukla, Shukla S-H-U-K-L-A, accuses global warming skeptics of, 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 um, of deceiving the taxpayer, of deceiving the public, his own environmental organization has been pulling a fast one on tax, a taxpayer expense. Uh, his attempt to use, re, uh, to use RICO to silence public debate is groundless, and so is his organization's tax-exempt status. Hey, we need to use RICO statutes against people who, who, who debase and debunk global, man-made global warming. Yeah, this is a guy that's been reeking a bu- This is why that they're out there fighting now against doing stuff on your own like this. Because there's, there, there, are, there are too many people who make too much money off of you by not cutting out the middleman. And the middleman in this particular, well, there is no middleman. You know, it, they, they just want to be the ones who are doing and, uh, well, the, the regulating of all this global warming crap, anti-global warming crap. They, they want to be the ones doing it because they're going to make all the money. Look at Al Gore. Uh, hey, hey, if we have a carbon exchange network where you could go and sell your carbon exchange chips, it'll be a good thing. Meantime, Al is raking in all kinds of money off of that um bit type of of environmentalist wacko environment but hey nobody th- you know inconvenient truth um was a very convenient tool to make Al Gore rich and they, obviously for shukla uh, too shukla uh for ex- let me give you an example uh, Shukla received three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars from IGES, uh, IGES in twenty fourteen for working twenty-eight hours per week. Oh, he worked twenty-eight hours and got over three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Wish I could do that. I'd stop working at Burger King and flipping burgers if I could make you know that kind of bank. But uh, he was paid 314000 by George Mason that same year. He earned a total of uh, $647,000. And he did uh, it, well, he did it by breaking you and me across the uh, proverbial coals. Meanwhile, IGES business manager and Shukla's wife. Anastasia Shukla received 166000 in 2014 while his daughter Sonia is employed as their assistant with an undisclosed salary. So if he actually ever um, decides to, well, he... He's making too much money off of the global... This is all about manipulation, folks. This is all about who gets to control you and to take your money. That's what the global warming thing is all about. Plain and simple. 
Nothing, no more, no, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, that's all it is. Because otherwise, they wouldn't be doing half this stuff. Or, or they'd be doing it for free, but they're making you know, $14 million here, $330,000 there, $1.9 million here. You've got to ask, how the hell are they doing that? I'd do it. Why not? If you're going to buy into global warming, yeah, I might as well sell you some. Sell you some stuff for it. That'd be, that would work for me. D.C. gun laws. Now, this, this D.C. police chief, uh, she deserves to get the, the, uh, um, the, the Dunfounded Dunkoff Award of the Year. Well, Dunkoff because it's, you know, well, that's German, but gun group um, is chastising the Washington, D.C. police chief because the Washington, D.C. police chief uh, is advocating, you won't believe what she's advocating, um, is advocating that that people should take down active the public should take down the active shooter until the cops can get there. The problem is is that this particular person has stopped many a law abiding citizen from owning a handgun in DC. So it's going to be kind of hard to stop a shooter in progress if nobody has the ability to stop the shooter in progress. Plain and simple. Somebody needs to show me how you can do that. I mean, unless you're Jet Li or somebody, and you can, or Superman, it can run faster than a speeding bullet. Um, well, how fa- that's pretty, pretty fast, by the way. How they, um, how how they're able to, well, how Superman is able to run faster than a than a speeding bullet? Because I don't know of a slow bullet. Is there such thing as a slow bullet? In any case, a D.C. police chief, Kathy Lanier, L-A-N-I-E-R, her, uh, her suggestion that ordinary citizens try to take down an active shooter before officers arrive is drawing criticism from Second Amendment advocates who question how residents of a city with some of the most restrictive and stringent gun laws in the nation could be expected to defend themselves. Well, like I said, unless they know karate, kung fu, or some other martial art, and they're really, really, really good at it, uh, maybe they're like ninja stealth, and they can avoid being shot, but only for a certain amount of time before they take one. So that means you gotta you got to take uh, as many of them, the shooters, out with you before the cops get there. Because otherwise, well, they say, well, this is the story continues. This is from the Washington Times, by the way. Uh, This is sound advice, says Alan Gottlieb, chairman of the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. It's not the Citizens Committee for the Right to Bear Arms. It's not the NRA. Um, And his name is Alan Gottlieb. Must be, you know, I thought all Jews hated guns. Guess not. But D.C. Police Chief Kathy, uh, well, anyway, this, this is sound advice as Alan Gottlieb, chairman of the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. But considering the draconian gun laws in the District of Columbia, it will remain difficult, if not impossible, for most private citizens to do what the chief is suggesting. Because the chief is, is suggesting that everybody... Uh, should be armed. All all legal citizens should be armed. And they should take down they should take down an active shooter. American people, the people, according to this report, they should take down an active shooter. In an interview with, uh, on Sunday 60, CBS 60 Minutes, 
Uh, Chief Lanier was asked was asked about what people should do if they're in the vicinity of an acting sh- active shooter, like those who carried out the recent terrorist attacks in Paris that killed 130 people at least. Uh, your options are run and hide or fight. I always say if you can get out of uh, get out in your your best option, if you're positioned to try to take down the gunman, then do so. And again, you can't do that if you're a guy. If you don't have a gun, how are you going to do that? You can't. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $50. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support... Visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. 
But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a non-profit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again, or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Inspire, value, organize, love, orate, guide, and yield. Don't know anything about it other than I see I saw an ad for Giveology at Giveology.org. Uh, you know I probably shouldn't give that out, um, but I don't know anything about it. So if you know something about it, let me know. But anyway, welcome back to hour number two here on the Rod Eccles Show. I am, of course, your lovable host, El Rod, coming to you live. For the fastest two hours on internet talk radio from my bunkerized home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is live free or die. It is not big government or bust. Uh, so welcome again to all you fellow liberty lovers and all you wonderful ecclesiastites as we get ready for Thanksgiving. Yum, yum, gobble, gobble. Anybody out there not going to eat Thanksgiving turkey? Um, by the way, the number that for you to call is toll free six zero three eight three five three two two four. Um, yeah, you know, actually, I ought to. I'm gonna ask this. I don't know. I, you know, maybe I'll get a call on it, or, or, or I won't. I don't. I don't know. But let's see. Let's get. Let's give it a shot, shall we? If you're not eating turkey, or if you're not just eating turkey, only eating turkey, what will you be eating? Instead of turkey or with your turkey this Thanksgiving, are you, are you going to have ham? Are you going to have um, duck, duck, goose or just duck, duck? Uh, are you going to have, um, I don't know, what, what, a veal or, or lamb? Uh, are you going to have buffalo, what, what, uh, some other birds, you know, pheasant maybe? I don't know. What, what, what are you, you going to have? Are you going to find the biggest chicken that you can possibly find? What are you going to have for Thanksgiving if you are not going to have turkey or if you're going to have something other 
uh, uh, to go along with the turkey. Uh, and let, let us know what it is. Give us a call, 603-835-3224. Um, also, uh, have you ever tried a, a, a but how, let's see if I can pronounce this properly, a turducken? Turducken. That is a turkey that is stuffed with duck. A duck that is stuffed with a chicken. And now, now, from what I understand, what you have to do is you have to debone all the birds. They're, they're birds, you know, turkey, duck, and one is chicken is the smallest, ducks the next, and and uh, you know you stuff all. In, in, I guess it takes hours to cook, but I. I I understand it. I've never, I can't say I've ever had it. Although I am willing to try, I want, yeah, that's an expensive meal. Do you know how much duck cost? Or, 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 or goose? I, I guess you can, if you have a big goose, you can do, you know, you can go a, uh, what is it, a, a, a goo ducking, which is instead of the turkey, it's a, a, it's a, it's a goose that you stuff the duck in because ducks are supposed to be smaller than goose. Uh, geese, but um, so have you ever tried that? I hear it's delish. I do want to try it. One of these, but you know, duck it can be expensive, and so uh, you're, first of all, you're talking about a turkey, so you got to get a large bird that can take being stuffed by a duck. Now, the least expensive part of all this is probably going to be the chicken, depending on the time. Well, maybe at this time of year, it might be the turkey. Uh, you know, big roasting chicken could be kind of expensive, but you know, you're talking about probably fifty or sixty, seventy dollars worth of bird uh, that you'll be cooking and and trying to eat. I gotta maybe I'll do that for for Christmas or or New Year's or something, and just maybe I'll just have a fe- a New Year's feast, and we'll have a, a turducken before the ball come ball comes down i really want to if you haven't for those of you who for those of you in rush limbaugh's real linda i am not a vegetarian i'm not a vegan although i like vegetarian some very vegetarian foods i like veggies i like fruits i like grains all that other stuff that isn't you know animal protein or animal whatever um i still like the animal stuff i like butter i like milk i like uh what yogurt i like i don't like cottage cheese um, I, 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 I like, I like eating meat. I mean, uh, the, uh, look, I like fish. I, I like many different kinds of fish. Um, I, although I used to like, used to eat lobster and clams and scallops. I don't eat shellfish and exoskeleton fish anymore. Uh, personal choice. But, um, I like all kinds of fish, you know, different, various types of fish. I like... I've had um, quail. I haven't had pheasant. I would love to try pheasant. I haven't had pheasant. Quail, quail are these little... Uh, you you got to eat like seven quail or something for it to make it. Because quail are just so tiny. They're like one or two bites per bird because they're so... But um, or, or is that the pheasant? What if I, What did I... Now I'm going to have to go back and ask if I had pheasant or if it was quail. One of the two. I haven't had both. Uh, it was delicious, whatever it is. So... I want to try the other one. Whatever I didn't have, I want to try it. But I want to try the one I did have again. Just saying. Um, you know, I like, I like steak and turkey and, and, and buffalo bison. Um, good good stuff. Lamb. Love lamb. Lamb is, lamb is so good. Uh, wish it wasn't so expensive. But lamb is just so... If you've never been... Look, if you haven't noticed... This is Thanksgiving week, so we're talking a little bit of food here. Because, hey, we have the freedom to do so. At least for now. Who, yeah, You know what might happen? It, somebody has probably got this, turn, this program turned on on a college campus somewhere, and people are listening to it, which is good. But somebody's going to be offended that I'm a meat eater. And they're, they're going to be shouting, Save space! Save space! You can't be talking about stuff that offends me! Well... I don't care if eating meat offends you. I happen to like it. I like eating it. I like tasting it. I like the way it feels in my mouth. Mmm. Yummy. 
Well, of course, there are certain things I, d I don't wish to try unless I absolutely have to for survival. I don't think I've ever had rattlesnake. Not interested in doing that. Not interested in trying eel. Not interested. I am not really interested in trying alligator. Nope. Don't want it. Uh, although I hear it tastes like chicken. Well, if that's the case, then I'll just eat chicken. Um, <laughs> but there are all kinds of... I haven't had emu yet either. I would love to try... I haven't had a... Well, emu and ostrich, they're red meat birds. I haven't had a red meat bird before. I'll have to try those. I know that there's a, uh, a couple of emu farms not too far from here, so I could probably um, obtain abscond with some from somewhere. Um, you know, I could definitely procure myself. I, I hope I'm not making you hungry. Uh, I do like a lot of veggies. In fact, next year, I think I'm going to have a very large garden. You ever watch the program, uh, Alaska, Ala uh, Alaska, Last Frontier, the, the Kilcher clan? I know there's another one out there, Alaska Bush People. Now, I, I I've seen a couple of episodes of the Bush people. They live in Alaska too. But here's the thing. It's, it, it's called this homesteading or subsistence lifestyle. Uh, these people don't have real jobs as we know them, but uh, they obviously are making money. Um, but they, they, they trade. But I just have a real interesting question. I don't know how this possibly happened. Now, I don't know the name of the program with the Bush people, that thing. I don't know that family's name. I don't know any of their, you know, they use nicknames like bear and whatever. I don't know. They, they look like animals, but anyway, um, now, now the mom and dad of the, uh, the Alaska Bush people, they sound pretty much normal. Uh, not, not much of an accent of any kind, but the kids, I mean, the, uh, they they're supposed to be speaking English, but you got they have subtitles for you to be able to understand them. I don't know what the hell they're speaking, but they're not a speak they're not speaking Alaskan. If you want to talk Alaskan, you know, like Sarah Palin or anything that type of accent, they're not speaking. I don't know where the hell these kids come from, but they're not speaking that. I don't know what the. Um, but my question is, well, if they're not around other people a lot. Okay, I can understand them getting off into this kind of strange, weird act because all the kids have this have this similar accent. Why is it then? That, now you have to understand that the Kilcher clan, they're um, they're they the the man the the father uh, of the of the, the 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 patriarchs of the family now, their father. Uh, Mr. Kilcher, the uh, the original person who started the whole thing, uh, he he's um, he came from a Nor uh, Nordic country. Was it Nor Norwegian or or Dutch or something? Anyway, that, that he he's an immigrant from from there, and he spoke English rather well because they have you know you know old film of him and and and, and audio of him talking. He spoke rather well, but he still had that that Nordic accent but none of the the kids or grandkids have an i don't even detect an alaskan accent where did they learn to speak such perfect english with little or no accent as we know you know neutral with a neutral accent basically um if they if they all they did was live on this family Alaskan homestead plantation thing. I I don't know. And and how do they pay their taxes? Or what are the taxes in Alaska? Property taxes on this type of stuff. You know, the, the, you got a ton of they got acres and acres of land. I'm seriously thinking, look, if you can get away with doing that, I would <laughs> I'm just wondering if I can do that here in New Hampshire. I'm just wondering out loud. Wouldn't it be, you know, uh, get off somewhere off, off the grid, you know, in, in, uh, in New Hampshire somewhere, I'd probably still have to pay property taxes. I don't know. Anyway, getting off the track on this Tuesday, which is acting more like a free for all Friday, 
simply because we have a holiday coming up. Just saying, it is. From the hill.com. But if you want to start, let me just say, if you want to start a homestead um, and, and you want to live more on your own terms, let me, let me tell you some of the states that, um, uh, that seem to be very accepting of that lifestyle. And New Hampshire does not seem to be one of them. And there are not many states left, believe it or not. I mean, most states have what they call a homesteading act. But it's not what you're thinking. It's not like you'd be able to live like, uh, like you see on the on those two programs on TV in Alaska. Obviously, you have Alaska. Uh, another state would be Montana that you'd be able to do something like that. Uh, but believe it or not, Dakotas are not a good option. Although um, I understand that 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 Oklahoma is an option. Now I. Again, I don't live in these places, but if you live in those places and you know your laws better than obviously I do, uh, but th- that might be something you'd want to look into. So you've got Oklahoma, you've got Montana, and of course you've got Alaska. And of course, um, if you just want to leave the country, then just head towards the northern territories of, of Canada. You know, in the old Yukon West, if as as it were, uh, and you'll pff, nobody's gonna bug you up there. Kind of like living in Alaska. Uh, so, got, you know, Oklahoma is a little is a little bit you know more civilized. Montana, you could probably get away with because there are a lot of nut jobs in Montana. But you know, big open spaces and everything, you could probably get away with Montana. Um, and I don't, I don't. You know, uh, you know, places like the Rocky Mountain states like Colorado and, and Utah, that might be a little bit tougher. In places like Idaho and, um, you know, other places, the, the upper Midwest, it's just all farmland. So you wouldn't be able to get away with that. But um, Montana, big sky country, yeah. Can- you know, the nor- northern territories of Canada, Alaska. And possibly Oklahoma. I don't know why Oklahoma, but I understand that that's maybe because everybody's got horses out there, I guess. I don't know. Thehill.com. Talking about a dichotomy. And talking about uh, hypocriticalism. Hypocriticalism. If that's not a word, I just made it up. I just created a new word. uh, Hypocriticalism. Can you say that two times fast? Can you say that one time fast? Hypocriticalism is the hypocrisy of the Obama administration. White House tries to shift terrorism debate from refugees. From the refuge. There's nothing to be afraid of with these refugees. There's nothing to be afraid of here. We have no credible threats. Oh, 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 wait. We're going to issue... A worldwide travel alert. There's no credible threat, but hey, you never know. You gots to be careful, you know. Could be a could be a terrorist that comes and and uh, and, and, and 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 pounces on on your plane or your or your or your boat or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got it. You know, you know. It could be anything. Anything at all. So just be careful. Worldwide terror. You know, you could be you could be going to, to that uh, you know, hey, yeah, you're gonna be going to Jordan or to Iraq, you know, and, and your plane will get hijacked. So they can I don't know, so they can fly it into a dune or something. Yeah, it could happen. Never know. Uh, a white house, you know, sand dune, sand dune, you know, in the desert. Going to Saudi Arabia. Maybe you're going to, I- wouldn't that be so, you go, you get on a flight to go to Iran. I don't know why you'd go to Iran, but just, in case, you know, just saying, you, you get on a flight going to Iran. The plane gets hijacked. Uh, by Iranians, maybe. Uh, it's not like it hasn't happened. And uh, they fly the plane into a building in Tehran. I don't know. That's, is that morbid to think of? I don't know. I hope, uh, 
Might as well. Uh, Syria is... Um, ISIS is looking for people to help them repair captured military aircraft. And you're thinking, well, yeah, of course, because they can't fix the stuff themselves. But you have to, they, want, they want the aircraft to work, not so they can use it to fight, but to take a page out of the end of, of, of the war in the Pacific with the Japanese. Yeah, they, they want to do their version of kamikazeism. I just heard that earlier this evening that that evidently they want to have suicide fly, you know you have suicide bombers might as well have suicide flyers well we there have already had suicide flyers it was called 911 uh, 2001 so they want to be able to use the, these broke down captured military aircraft to have suicide flyers uh, they obviously can't call them kamikaze pilots because they're not Japanese. It's got to be something, some other word. I'm sure that there is. Anyway, so that's, yeah, we're going to have to watch out for that. So, I don't know, kamikaze or suicide flyers, you know, suicide bombers, suicide flyers. How do you defeat people who are willing to die? Well, how do you defeat them? Well, the, it, I, people have asked the question, Ron, Ron, how do you defeat people who are willing to die? Well, I, I think the answer is actually pretty accurate, pretty easy. You, you cut off the head. That, that's, look, those people, those are the ones that really don't necessarily want, because if they wanted to die, they would have already you know, run around, they've already blown themselves up, but they don't want to die. They want to send all these younger people out there and can and now start convincing, you know, young women, girls to be suicide bombers because, you know, we're all except for the Obama administration, we're all paying attention to these young fighting age males who seem to be the bulk of terrorists around the globe. So we're we're paying everybody's paying attention to them and except for a surprise uh, you know, late night attacks in in cities that that uh, that that people have no governmental right to carry a firearm um uh, the, the, it's hard for them to get and do and carry out their operations and and get such huge numbers so they're they're talking about you know well let's uh, get some females let's convince and brainwash some females to do this and so we'll, we'll probably start seeing an increase of of female bombers suicide bombers but this is something new if you if you want to stop this type of activity, you got to find and cut off the leadership because those are the people that don't want to die. But if you kill them off, well, they're not out there, you know, trying to recruit and tell other people that they have to die uh, because, you know, who's going to lead them? So cut off the head. I, and, and I have no problem with that. I have no problem with surgical strikes that, that find the leader the leaders of these of these terrorist groups and taking them out. I have no problem with that whatsoever. That's what you do. That that'll end the war quicker than fighting the the the, the stupid jihadists who want to who who really believe that they want to die anyway, so they can get to their set what seventy vestal virgins whatever. Um, again, I explained last night why I think that that's not a that's not heaven or paradise, but that's torture. Uh, because they got to keep doing it, doing it over and over and over. And, and evidently that once you have the virgin, you know, Allah will make them a virgin again the next day. So it's not like there, because I, I wonder what happens in, in all eternity if you get rid of, you know, if you go through all 70 virgins, they're not virgins anymore, right? Well, obvi- evidently uh, what, what, it, what it is is that, um, you know, you'll have your virgin and you'll be able to have sex afterlife sex with this virgin who won't be a virgin anymore. But the next day, however long a day is in the afterlife, I don't know. But the next day, they'll be a virgin again. Allah will make them a virgin again. So it's just kind of kind of reminds me it would be like um, the, the 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 season that I watched last season I watched of uh, of um, American Horror Story, the uh, Coven. In the in the end, where 
everybody has their, you know, their hell, their nightmare, and it just repeats over and over again for eternity. That would seem to me that that would be the problem of having a virgin turn a virgin again, because every day you'd be doing the same thing. You, and you know what they say? You can't do the, You can't do that kind of thing all the time. And that's just torture because too much of a good thing. What? Too much of a good thing obviously is not that much of a, and that includes, is not much of a good thing. And that includes sex, obviously. So having a virgin every day or repeat, I don't think that'd be good. We'll be back in just a second. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 50 dollars a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's Innovative Boot Camp Program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. Stuck in a boring, low-paid job? By 2017, there will be a shortage of 2 million cybersecurity jobs worldwide. If you have a technical background but don't have a computer certification, you're being drastically underpaid. In months, you could be qualified for a new job in information technology, making real money with real job security. A new career is just a few clicks away at thecodeoflearning.com.
listening to The Rod Echo Show. And we are back. Welcome back, folks, to The Rod Echo Show. This is the fastest two hours on Internet Talk Radio. Let me, uh, for those of you who've already done so, um, I want to thank you, but let me put out there again. You know, it, 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 during the holiday season, we like to, I like to play uh, holiday music. Well, obviously, you can't, on a, on, a, on a commercial program, and this is now considered a commercial program since we are syndicated and there are ads, advertisements that, that help support it both on the air and online. Um, so now there, it isn't, it isn't in the realm of, um, uh, of editorializing or anything like that, but it's, you know, you, you, I got to pay royalties for this stuff. And because of how they do the royalties for this type of program, it gets very expensive. I mean, really ridiculously expensive. So I can't, you know, what, what I did back in 2009, 2010, I can't do that kind of thing anymore. Uh, so I put out the call and the challenge uh, for original Christmas music material from the listeners. And I've, I've gotten a few responses and the stuff is awesome, really. It's really I'll start playing those on December 5th. However, there, there's still room for more to be added. So if you have an original Christmas themed song or or musical piece and you would allow me to play it now again no more than i mean the song can be longer than four minutes but understand i'm only going to play a maximum of four minutes of the song and i'm just going to play you know one or two per per show for you know the the first few weeks of, of December up until Christmas and the holiday break, so uh, and you know if I don't if I don't get enough for that I want to put on that's good enough to put on the air for one every day I'll just repeat. But you're you're gonna get full credit for your for your work. Obviously, you get full for full credit as well as if you have a website or if you're selling your material. You'll also get a, you know, basically a free commercial here on the program to tell people where to go and be able to purchase more of your your wonderful music, uh, or you can just let let me use it for uh, maybe you don't even want to do that, but you can just let me uh, use use a Christmas theme musical piece that you uh, that you own. Okay, now you you've got to have the ability to to give me permission to play it. Without any royalty fees or anything else involved, uh, any other compensation, what have you, but other than just get, being given the credit that it's you, and that that I get to play it. That's all. Um, I think that's pretty simple. So just just send it to the Rod Eccles Show at gmail dot com. That's a that's a email set up just for you guys. The Rod Eccles Show at gmail dot com. Uh, remember, it has to be an MP3 format. Cannot be any other type of format because I just won't be able. I, I probably can, but I don't want to have to deal with it. I don't. I don't want to have to deal with converting because uh, you know there is. Con, I would have to convert it to an MP3 and all that kind of stuff, and that gets into that. There's too much time hassle, what have you. Must be in an MP3 format. So all I have to do is just load it into into my player as well as place it. I'll also place it on on the website so people will be able to to click and hear it. So it has to be and, and for the web the MP3 is just a lot easier. I know there's MP4 was there MP5 now, but yeah, should, this has to be MP3. Sorry, uh, that is my only. You know, you got it. I'm only going to play the if it's longer than four minutes. I'm only going to play up to the four minute mark, and then the rest of the music gets cut off. Uh, I, I can't, you know, I mean, I understand some people like to have these 12 minutes, uh, you know, sonatas, but I can't play that on that on the air. So four minutes is the max. It can be less than four minutes, but four minutes is going to be the max. Ideally, it would be around two and a half minutes, the two and a half minute mark. But um, four minutes is the max. If it's less than four minutes, I'll still play it all. But um, not more than four minutes if it's longer than that. 
So go ahead and send that off to the Rod Eccles Show at gmail.com. I appreciate it. Now over to thehill.com. By the way, uh, yeah, go and see rodeckles.net. Um, lots of good stuff over there. If you want to hear the, the famous battleship clip, it is over there on rodeckles.net. If you want to see... Now, I said that the, the video was kind of dark, but if you want to see my last keynote presentation there is a full length video of it over on rodeckles.net and uh, under speaking rodeckles.net slash speaking you can see the I think it's like 30-35 minutes long the whole presentation so um, and this is the first time that I've had somebody absolutely actually film the whole thing so take a peek rodeckles.net I told you there's good stuff being added over there. There's also, uh, if you miss, you know, check out all the all the different pages, the the interviews and stuff like that. But if you want to see the speech that I recently did at the Worcester uh, Tea Party of uh, meeting, that is over there, uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff, including um, uh, the battleship, the famous battleship segment or clip from. Uh, this this program a few years ago that still stands up to this day uh, is over there as well. RodEccles.net. There's the pitch for it. Uh, TheHill.com. The White House tries to shift terrorism debate from refugees to guns. The White House yesterday opened up a new fight with Republicans in Congress uh, challenging them to pass laws to prevent suspected terrorists from purchasing firearms. I don't know how you're going to do that because they're not, they're not running around purchasing firearms on a legal basis. They're not walking into Joe, you know, you know, Joe Countryman's uh, bait and tackle and firearms uh, biz, small business to purchase a gun. This is the most ridiculous, redonkulous thing that these people can come up with. Look, Obama has already said that his last year in office is going to be geared towards taking your guns away from you. I know some people are saying, Rod, you just said you. Taking guns away from you. You didn't mention yourself, Rod, because nobody's taking mine. If I get my gu- if I get a gun, I'm keeping it. it- I don't. If I obtain a gun legally, I'm keeping it. Nobody gets to take it from me. It's my property. Plain and simple. So members of Congress are prepared to allow. This is what they said. Members of Congress are are prepared to allow those individuals who who are already in the United States and are suspected of having links to terrorism. Of going to purchase. Well, if you know that they're already in the United States and they're already linked or suspected to be linked to acts of terrorism already, why are you still letting them run around loose? And this makes absolutely no sense. Let me read that to you. Let me get to the whole point here. The hill from the hill.com. The House yesterday. Uh, Monday, open a new fight with Republicans in Congress, challenging them to pass laws to prevent suspected terrorists from purchasing firearms. Now, after suffering a defeat in a House vote to clamp down the flow of uh, Syrian refugees, White White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest said Congress's response to the Paris terror attacks has been misguided. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Misguided. Do you understand that he just said Congress's act has been misguided because they want to clamp down on allowing in refugees that could be terrorist. But this is what Ernest says, and it's a quote. Members of Congress are prepared to allow those individuals who, all, who are already in the United States and are suspected of having links to terrorism, of going and purchasing a firearm. So that they know there are people already here, 
that are potentially dangerous. And yet they want to let in more. And when they let in more, they, they want to use that as the bully pulpit to take away your right to bear an arm, a firearm. Uh, uh, because why? Because they think that the terrorist is going to go to Joe Countryman's block and tackle and firearms to purchase a firearm legally. Look, those people can't buy guns anyway. There's nothing to check out. He goes on to say, I think it's pretty it's a pretty clear indication that Republicans in Congress are more interested in playing politics and more scared of the who's playing politics. Josh, you just said there are people already in the United States, United States suspected of having links to terrorism that you have already let in. And yet the Republicans are the ones playing politics. No, the Republicans are saying, well, let's not let any more in until we can fully vet them. And you're saying that's a bad idea. Obama's going to veto that and that. And you're accusing the, uh, 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 the Republicans of playing politics? Isn't that simply because the, 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 the Republicans are scared of the NRA? How about the Republicans just might be scared of the American voter who's saying enough is enough. You're not going to let any more of these these uh, Syrian so-called refugees. Hell, hell, hey, Josh. Mr. Ernest, did you not see what Canada did? Is Canada playing politics, too? Because Canada just what uh, they just prevented. uh, They just laid out the, the, the new what Trudeau. What's Justin Trudeau? He's a new prime minister. You know, the hunk, hunky, the hunky prime minister, I don't know, what is he, like 40 or something? The hunky young prime minister of the great white north now, uh, an ultra liberal. Uh, they're saying, uh, I heard today that they're cutting off that no more fighting age single males will be allowed into Canada. So basically, anybody who is a single male from like 17 to 35 or 40 you're not getting into Canada according to this this new procedure or policy in, in Canada from from Justin Trudeau's government. And yet you still want to let them here in here into this country and then accuse Republicans who want to stop them of uh, of playing of playing political games. I don't I don't I don't know. Folks, I don't know where we get these people from. I just do not understand. I I don't know. Trust me, I try with all my might to understand them. Because I need to understand them in in order to be accurate with the description when I I talk to you about it. But these people, they just defy. this This is beyond stupidity. This is beyond partisanship. This is nothing more than a purposeful agenda. Under, d- did you understand what I just said? This is not out of ignorance or stupidity that these policies come into play and that the words that they're using are the words that they are using. Everything is deliberate. This is a purposeful eight-year event, if you will. There is nothing le- uh, left. To t- look, look, when Biden was out there giving his non enter the race, non acceptance speech, Obama was standing there looking at him. He wasn't there to support Joe. He was there to make sure Joe did exactly what he wanted. He was there to, to berate Joe and, and say, Joe, I'm the president. I'm your boss right now. You're going to do what I say, or you're going to be a body. You got it? So I'm going to be there just to, just to remind you, as a reminder, that if you don't do what I say, Joe, you're going to be a body. You got it? Good. Now, get your butt out there and tell everybody. I don't care how long you got to take. You can take 20 minutes. Better be like five, but you can take 20. I got time. You know, my golf game got canceled today. So I got time. So you can go out there, five, 20 minutes long, tell everybody that you're not running for president. Just don't tell them I told you so, but you made this decision. But understand, 
it's my decision that you're not running. And if you try to run, you're going to be a body. You got it? Got it. Good. Okay, let's go. You got this, Joe. Come on. Come on now. You can do it. Yeah, I know you're sad, Joe, but hold your head up. Yeah, yeah, Joe, because you're not going to run. None of this is by accident. All of this is cor- this. Look, Obama's taking a cue from the from the Clintons. The Clintons have choreographed everything. Once they got into that White House, there was nothing that they didn't plan out. Now, well, the the uh, the, the the impeachment that wasn't planned, but everything within their power was planned out and scheduled. There was nothing that did not happen by happenstance. Uh, that happened by happenstance. If you th- I, look, uh, obviously they couldn't control every situation because that whole Monica Lewinsky thing, that wasn't supposed to get out. Monica was just supposed to be, <gasps> oh, you know, uh, starstruck. She would never say anything against Bill. But I'm just, but hey, look, when she had to come clean and tell. <laughs> <laughs> come clean oh god uh when she ended up telling the truth uh can can i i know this is live radio but can i erase that part that was probably pretty bad to say it that way i caught myself too late well it's out there now um <laughs> i know some some people are going to be like well, wait wait let me hit the rewind button if they're hearing this on a, you're probably going to go back and try to listen to this. If you're listening to it live, you're probably going to try to find out how you can listen to this program on a replay. And you're going to rewind to, uh, to this particular point in the program to see what I said. Cause some of you probably missed what I said. I know you did. And that's a good thing. Um, some of you probably got it. <laughs> Cause, uh, I know my listeners out there, most of you are pretty quick, but some of you, especially those in Rush Limbaugh's Rio Linda and you liberal nut jobs out there and you libertarian idiot idiosos, you probably didn't get it, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so Mo- when Monica Lewinsky, all right, now I got to change subjects because now I'm, I, I, I keep thinking of that, what I just said, and it's just not working anymore. I cannot Monica, well, I can because I'm a professional, but Monica Lewinsky tried to tell the truth when she wasn't supposed to, and she got ripped apart. Now, if you think anybody else inside the White House now is going to tell the truth about what Obama has been doing the past seven years, so up to this point, what he wants to do for eight years, you you are out of luck. Nobody's going to do it. They remember what the Clintons did. They understand that Obama is just as ruthless as the Clintons. Now, granted, I don't. I, you, we can't really say that there are a lot of bodies under Obama that, as there were under Clinton, but don't think that that's not possible. And the Clintons are ruthless, but Obama is not such a pretty boy. Like you know, you may think he's. You, you, you may think he's. I know some women thought he was cute. And you thought he was a good-looking guy. I don't. Maybe, maybe not. I don't care. That's the irrelevant. Uh, the hell, they thought that Bill Clinton was a good-looking guy too. I don't. Actually, you know what? Now that Bill Clinton's old, I, I he's probably better looking. He's probably aged. You know, even though he's gotten old, he's probably aged. But uh, he probably looks better now than he did when he was in office. I, I, I just don't see where people thought Bill Clinton was a good-looking guy back in the day. I don't know. I. He, uh, hey, he's 60-something years old. I don't, he's got a full head of hair. It's all white. And I, I think he's probably a good-looking guy for being not nearly 70. But back when he was in his 40s, yes. Okay. But you have to understand that these people are ruthless. And everything is planned. You cannot go off the planned reservation with them. If you do, you're going to have to suffer the consequences. Now, you have to understand that, that well... Look, that may have been what happened to uh, 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 Chris Anderson, ambassador, in Libya. Uh, again, look, that, that was under Clinton's. Can, can I say this? I know this is just conjecture and it might just be coincidence. But I don't know of any diplomatic or governmental deaths after Clinton left the Department of State. Has anybody else noticed that? 
Have, have the am I, I I don't I don't remember any. But we've got eight years of the Clinton presidency and four years of the Clinton of the female Clinton um, uh, secretary of the state of the state. Um, and we've got bodies that line up, that add up, that pile up under the Clintons. A constant, whenever these guys get into power of leadership like this, powerful role, it seems like people around them die. Now, I don't know if I were in Washington, D.C., and I were a politico, you know, one of those people that that just works in government all the time because they they don't have the skills to work in the in the private sector. And Hillary Clinton is elected president. Oh, I'd get the hell out of town. And stay away for four years, at least. Because if she's president, that means more people are going to die. Mysteriously. Now, I'm not accusing them of murder. I'm just saying I think it's it is quite coincidental that so many people have um, under mysterious circumstances lost their lives while they were in power. I'm just saying. I, and, and if I was a uh, politico in D.C., I wouldn't be taking the chance, really. I mean, hell, right now I wouldn't be taking a chance because you got these idiots out there talking. Well, you got, you know, hey, 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 you Republicans, you're playing politics. I'm not playing politics. Yeah, I want these people to come in. I know some of them are, 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 are probably terrorists. But hey, if we take away the Second Amendment, we don't got to worry about them getting guns. Let me tell you something about them getting guns. You couldn't legally get a gun like that in Paris, could you? They had them, didn't they? You weren't supposed to have the weapons that they had in that Paris attack, were you? Because that's illegal in France. So if all of that stuff that they had and were using while committing the attacks in Paris were illegal and no, none of the law-abiding Parisians had them, then how did these terrorists get them if all that stuff was illegal? So, hey, Mr. Ernest, if you take away the Americans', Americans law-abiding citizens' right to own, hold, and have firearms, how is that going to keep the criminal from getting them? Because we've just seen a major attack where more than 130 people lost their lives. But yet there were strict gun laws in place that these people weren't, these terrorists weren't supposed to be able to get guns, right? right. Well, okay. So right now we know that there are terrorists in this country that you, your administration, Mr. Ernest, let them in. You want to let in more. And your answer to this problem is not to stop the flow of more people, more of these people coming in, but to take away everybody else's right to defend themselves. So we can be like Paris. How is that reasonable? How is that? How is it the Republicans are the one playing politics? I don't, I don't, folks. It is what it is. But you, you, and you know what it is. Well, we are coming close to the end of the program for tonight. So I just wanted to say because I, 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 I will probably be traveling tomorrow at this time visiting my mommy for Thanksgiving. So I want everybody to have a wonderful and safe holiday. Be here for the rest of the week uh, this time for for um, uh, special stuff. Um, Maybe I'll post some stuff back from way long ago. You're going to want to listen. Anyway, I'm Art Echo. This has been the Art Echo Show. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving, everyone. See you back here next week. I'm out.